I want to talk about three things you must be aware of when taking on landscaping jobs because if you're not, you'll straight up get crushed. What's up? This is Keith Kelfus with the Landscaping Employee Trap, keithkelfus.com. And in this video, I want to talk about how to plan landscaping jobs and the biggest mistakes to avoid. get back to the vlog in a little bit here but I'm gonna go through these three things right now all right so I've learned this stuff for, from a lot of trial and error a lot of headache and frustration so the first one is rails having rails set up on your business what does that mean well it's not just your business you can put it in all different areas but specifically if these are rails knowing exactly who your customer is inside of this area and who your customer is not on the outside of the rails is not your customer what areas or zip codes do you want to do work in what areas do you not want to do work in what type of landscaping jobs do you want to take on what type of landscaping jobs do you not want to take on see that which is the same is not similar and that which is similar is not the same i got this shirt from joshua latimer it's a little tight i thought i'd wear it for the video okay so that's very important for you to be very clear and specific and have a picture in your mind and a vision based off what you've done before based off what you like doing what's profitable and knowing very clear about what you don't like doing and leaning towards what you like to but when you have a clear picture of that and you put rails up on the business you create these constraints and you stay within those rails trust me okay now that you know that stuff you can cater your marketing that way and now you know how to do number two which is the second important thing when qualifying landscape jobs is qualifying so the first mistake is not having rails on your business, right? The second mistake is not qualifying your customers over the phone if you can help it. So we, in the first stages of our landscaping business, we want to just jump and drive across town and go meet a customer because it feels like we're doing something uh, that makes us successful. And really don't confuse act, you know, activity with productivity. Well, if you can qualify a customer over the phone and ask them a bunch of questions, then you can save yourself a trip. I, I, I just simply went to like the, the nursery two weeks ago on a Saturday, and I assumed they would have the plant that I need there. I drove all the way to the nursery and I got there and they literally were out of stock of the plant that I needed. And as I was driving back, I was like, why didn't I just call? So the next time I called and I made sure they had it, have it. Think about that all the time. What can I solve with the telephone instead of just knee jerk reaction going? So with the customer, you'd be like, hey, Bob, can you describe the project over the phone? Yeah. Can you kind of Give me a vision. What needs to be done? What type of work? Okay. Okay. How about how big is it? About how much? Uh, that actually sounds like too small of a job for us. Are you sure you don't want anything else done? Because we offered these services. We can do a package deal, and you know, because we have a three hundred dollar minimum of five. We have a hundred dollar. It doesn't matter, right? I have a fifty dollar minimum to show up. Whatever it is, my minimum is three hundred bucks. In, in my business it's just what works for me right so when you can compare everything against those numbers because you have rails on your business and you ask your customer qualifying questions oh they just wanted one bush trimmed or they wanted you to cut their lawn one time and it's like three feet high 
and there's bricks in the yard, and it's two cities away. It's totally outside of the rails of what you specified. So, huh, it doesn't sound like it's a good fit for us, Bob. Well, uh, best of luck. Thank you. On to the next phone call. <gasps> There's another fish on the line. Hey, uh, Joe. Hmm. Oh, sounds like a fit. Tell you what, you know, you can solve a lot over the phone, okay? Right? Okay, now the third thing is not knowing your numbers. Not knowing your numbers. So once you put rails up on your business, you qualify the customer on the phone, they want you to do the job, but they need a price first. They need an act, they need your quote. Well, before you just go, oh, that'll be about 500 bucks, uh, zip your lips and say, hey, I'm gonna go sit in my truck for a few minutes and do some math. I'll come knock on the door in 15 minutes or I'll send you a quote, right? It's better if you can give them a number on the spot and try to lock it down and get a deposit check right then and there or, or agree to start service or something, right? Move quickly and serve your customers. Not knowing your numbers. Remember I talked about putting rails up? What's your day rate? What's your minimum? How much do you have to do per day so your business works? What's your break even point every day to run your business and, and everything except for your owner, your owner's, your gross profit margin, your profit, right? What is your break even point? Let's just say for you, it's 300 bucks a day. Okay. Let's say, let's say you want to make a, uh, Let's say you want to put $150 in your pocket every day, right? Well, 150 bucks pre-tax, right? I don't know. So that means you have to do a bare minimum of $450 a day, right? If the job's going to take you a day, it's got to be 450 bucks less materials, minus, you know, if you needed materials or dumping fees or whatever else type of um, variable cost comes into play. Okay, so now if, if it was only gonna take you a half a day, maybe it's $225, right? That you have to make before, what's your half a day point? Lunchtime, one o'clock? So when you go to give a customer a quote and it's only about 200 bucks worth of work, you know, this could be a 22,000, it could be 2,500 bucks. I don't know what it is for your business. My numbers are totally different than this, right? So you, it's about $200 worth of work, right? And it's uh, gonna take you half a day. That's lower than your, your day rate at half a day, right? You're gonna have to be like, well, it's gonna be $225. You have to add an extra 25 to make your numbers, right? Now, that's just you hitting what you gotta make, right? So you should have a goal. What if your goal is, uh, you know, you gotta make two, 150 a day, but you really want to make 250 a day, right? For me, my goal is I, I want to make 700 bucks a day every single day. If I make uh, less than 400, um, I'm not too happy, right? Because I've been doing this a long time. So, which you got to be more picky with the jobs and you know, to get to that point, and some guys can't even start the truck unless they're doing 2,500 a day. It's all relative, right? So, for you, 450 bucks a day, okay? Now the next thing is, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this up. But say you gotta know your man hour rate. You gotta know what all the costs are inside of the job, and if you just jump out and agree to do a job without knowing your numbers, right? That's why I said go sit in the truck. I said, okay, how much is materials? What's my gas, labor, insurance, taxes? What are all these numbers, okay? Here's something I learned from the Contractor Sales Academy. They talk about the 50% gross profit margin. Uh, Tom Reber from the Contractor Sales Academy. I figured this part out on my own, but he did mention it. Um, he was talking about setup and breakdown time. I was like, 
I wish I would have learned that a long time ago. Okay, so knowing your numbers, what about your on, we'll call it your on-ramp and your off-ramp. Your on-ramp to doing the job, and then your off-ramp. So setup time, driving at the job site, picking up equipment, uh, picking up materials, getting the job going, and then now you're actually doing the job. And then you have an entire breakdown time, which is like, you know, cleaning everything up, breaking everything down, driving back, putting everything away. That's still all part of the job, even though you're not on the actual job site. You're working those hours and you're burning up non-billable hours. This shirt is so tight, it's driving me nuts, bro. Gosh. I gotta watch everything I say with this YouTube crap now because somebody like, I'm not paying for your drive time. I can't believe this guy. He's caught, he charging customers for drive time. Well, one funny thing is you in your head you can think because you've raised your prices that your prices are so high now, and then go compare your prices to a bigger company and your prices are still way too low, right? And it goes on and on and on and on like that. So are you, are you making sure that you're charging for going and picking up materials and setting up the job site? Not only doing the job, but breaking down the job site and cleaning everything up to completion? because that's all part of the job, right? You should be charging for that, so therefore you're not rushing and feeling like you have to cut corners. So in order to provide great service for your customers so you can really bend over backwards and put your heart into what you're doing and be very intentional about it, then you should charge the customer for setting up and breaking down so you can do a complete job. So no stone is left unturned and mwah, you could, you could do a beautiful finishing touch, and because you charge for that time, now you feel good about it when you're doing the final, you know, the final thing to make it just perfect, right? To make everything beautiful, you know? So knowing those numbers from experience, say a 10 hour job might take an extra three hours. An hour, 1.5 hours on the front end, and it might take 1.5 hours on the back end. A 10 hour job might take an hour and a half to set up and get going, and then an hour and a half on the back end to clean everything up, right? So instead of it taking, you know, one long 10 hour day, it's probably gonna take you a day and a half to do a one day job. So knowing those numbers based off experience, and then reflecting that on your day rate, what you gotta make. So if you gotta make, you gotta do a thousand dollars and revenue a day, you know, and then you take on a job that you think is only gonna take you one day. Well, I gotta do a thousand bucks a day. So, to make it all work, maybe 30% of that thousand dollars is profit, right? What is, what is that, $333? $333 in, in gross profit. So you make 30%, all the rest is overhead, is overhead, right? So you think it's gonna take you a day, but you didn't calculate setup and breakdown time, right? So it takes you a day and a half, and now your 30% your profit margin gets cut all the way down to like 15%. And because you didn't allocate that time, right? because maybe you really wanted to get the job, I don't know. You didn't put the rails up on your business. And maybe you didn't qualify the customer and now you don't know your numbers. So what happens is that cuts into time that you could have already been started on doing another job or that you plan to do. So now you have this opportunities cost eating you alive because you have all these non-billable hours that you're working that you're not only not making money, you're losing money very quickly because you could have been on another job making money. Does it make sense? So being very careful and just taking a breath, <sighs> saying how long is this really actually going to take to do all this and do a good job. Knowing your numbers means not only just knowing the money numbers, but knowing your time numbers, knowing the math of how long things actually take and how long things actually take based on how strategic and how efficient you are when you're on the job working, how well thought out your plan is, and really just cold hard, ex hard experience of how long you've done the actual thing. So 
you as a contractor giving a customer a flat of a, a flat rate of one thousand dollars to do something if it takes you two and a half days when it should take you only a day and a half well that's on you you got to eat it you're not charging them by the hour I didn't know how long stuff took when I first got started so I did like a twenty thousand dollar landscape job for a customer I didn't know how long it was I thought it would take like two weeks I thought I was gonna make a lot of money it took a month after two weeks, I was knocking on the customer's door, terrified, begging this customer, please, please just switch me over to hourly. Please, can I just work hourly? I was so scared. And uh, he agreed to do it. The customer agreed to do it. So I just started billing him hourly. <laughs> and he was getting a great deal, by the way, and he knew that. And that's okay. I did a $20,000 landscape job. And you know how much I made off of it? It took me an entire month. I made $1,400 and it took me a month. And I had an uh, eviction notice. I think I I think I had an eviction notice on my door. And I was there. Oh god, it was it was insane. So, put rails up on your business to recap. Make sure you qualify your customers. And make sure you know your numbers. Slow down a little bit. Put the big rocks in first. And you're only going to learn how to do this through cold hard experience, which means you're going to have to go out and fail and mess up. And when something happens and you're working for free and you're in anxiety, just breathe and tell yourself it's all part of the process and learn your lessons. And then slowly but surely you'll keep moving upstream. All right, back to the vlog. So here it goes. This whole property, trim everything. Pull all the weeds, clean it up, fix the beds. All the areas that need edging fixed, we're fixing the edging or repairing it or replacing it. So this whole area, everything's getting trimmed. Putting down weed barrier fabric and pins. We have 600 feet of weed barrier fabric and whenever we do weed fabric, I always budget, charge for and estimate and pick up for an extra 30% more fabric because that's what it takes because of overlap and all that. Make sure if you're doing fabric, you go and you pick up good scissors, pick up three, four, five pairs of scissors, whatever, how many pins you need to pound it into the ground, make sure you get rubber mallets, to pound the pins down and get literally triple the amount of pins that you think you would need. Uh, we put a pin every, about, about every foot put them everywhere hold all the fabric down so it's not ever popping up in any way shape or form um, like right here this edging is getting repaired so we're gonna get a right angle and butt connector and fix it this is getting ripped out and just turn into a natural edge with mulch this is all getting mulch with black mulch these pampas grass are getting ripped out this tree ring had something else here. So the whole thing is getting removed and turned into a natural edge. This whole tree ring is getting removed and turned into sod again, or grass seed and topsoil. I gotta look at the quote. This is all getting ripped out. I mean, this is getting fixed. All the greenery is getting ripped out and black mulch. This is just getting cleaned up. This is getting weed bearer fabric pins and cobblestone cobblestone remove that hosta trim those shrubs I'm going to the landscape supply to pick up materials we bear fabric pins butt connectors for edging stuff like that here we are at the landscape supply dog here we are everything you possibly need. We need this. We need weed and fabric and pins. 15 foot roll, uh, you roll it out and you have to have it cut. Okay, so weed barrier fabric. Here's two ounce. Here's three ounce. It's a lot thicker. Oh, I'm going to a different landscape supply because this one doesn't have, they're all out of pins, and I'm gonna save $100 by going up the street. 
to rocks and roots. So I'll just go to rocks and roots. I gotta flip these around real quick. So I need a two inch ball for my other trailer. Constantly ticking, clock is ticking, time is flying. It's like an elephant standing on your chest. And you're only one human. Here you go. Thanks, sir. Landscape trailer hooked up. So now I have a place to put all the materials and the garbage, or trash from the job site. Look at this. My wife packs me pineapple. <laughs> the famous. Rocks and Roots, landscape supply. I legit forgot my company credit card. I'm literally gonna use my other credit card. So I'm, now I'm learning about grass seed here. This guy knows everything. He had, uh, what is this, Zents Landscaping, a hydro seeding company? This is our old company, our parent company. We are now Rocks and Roots Landscape Supply, and we no longer contract but we do sell the materials and rent the equipment wow isn't that something what year was this this would have been out of 70 72 73 dang see man he's got all the wisdom so look at this it's the trailer it's the trailer look at this messy trailer What is a large landscaping job? A large landscaping job is something that's about two to three times the size of what you're normally used to doing. Now, that being said, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to underbid, underquote, underestimate the amount of time, labor, and materials it takes, especially cleanup and breakdown time. So, what you want to do is add an extra 30% to the price extra 30% to the time it takes to do the job. You might need one entire day just to get all the materials on the job site. What up, dog, pimp? What up? Pimp. Nice. Look at that. It's called the Stacked Slate Sphere from Aquascape. Thank you, Jeff Michaels and Greg at Woodstock. I'm fascinated by creative destruction. It's where, in order to create something new, the things that are in place, or old things, have to wash away or be destroyed. So it can feel, it's, it's tough, right? I'm really realizing that having too many emotions around things don't change the actual thing itself, but just having hard line boundaries or principles or rules or policies, it just stands like a wall and you don't have to think about it. Okay, just pulled up at the next one. This customer. They want, I guess, their whole landscape ripped out and redone. This will be fun. Quote. Just notified another customer that we're starting a job Monday. So in 6,800 bucks. I like doing jobs like that. I take a few days to do. All right, I called this customer and they're not picking up, so I'm gonna go knock on the door. Stop real quick on the way. Doing landscape quotes and happened to be right down the street from my buddy Steve. What's up, Steve? <laughs> I haven't seen Steve in a minute. Steve's getting married in February. And the comments say, congratulations, Steve. All right, I gotta get back to doing these quotes. All right, next quote, next quote. Right there, that house. 
trim up that little ornamental tree and the shrubs in front like 400 bucks and then on the side he has a couple um, rows of Sharon that need to be trimmed and then four arbor bites in the back that need to be topped and trimmed 50 bucks a piece 600 I said I uh, we can do all this before lunch so 500 bucks I sent him a quote for 500 bucks yo that quote I just did just now I just did nope uh, trimming a silver maple cha ching 700 bucks just to trim two branches and the dude was like what and I knew he was gonna be like what <laughs> he's like can you do like 500 if I paid you cash I'm like nope 700 he's like well I got another quote from a company now I'll tell you a 625 I'm like it's a good price and I'm telling you dude if you hire anybody any cheaper than that you get what you pay for you got a nice vinyl fence back there you got stuff going on so I just know what it takes to do it and I'm not 700s that's it <laughs>